Hey everybody, just wanted to give you a little intro of this awesome guest I have coming up. Her family was actually featured in a documentary called The Wild and Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. And uh, Natalie is absolutely wild and wonderful. And her and I couldn't really be on further ends of the political spectrum, or at least what the political spectrum used to be. Yet, uh, here we are in this conversation talking about some of the most controversial things happening right now in our society uh, and around the world. And um, it's amazing how we find common ground and how the polarization of politics and partisanship continues to shift as our freedoms are eroded and uh, we continue to deal with the censorship regime. Speaking of which, my last episode last week was with Natalie and it was about the Equal Rights Amendment, which no one's talking about, yet has remained completely staunched and inert, uh, as, oppo as opposed to taking full effect in our Constitution. So Natalie and I had a robust conversation about that last week, but you probably didn't see it recommended, and it was probably not very algorithmically blessed, let's say. And that's because um, censorship is real right now in this country, and uh, we know from emails and disclosed different nuggets and court cases that the Biden administration is censoring YouTube, among others, to keep bad press away from Biden's name, which is, I mean, virtually impossible. <laughs> but um, whenever possible, we're going to be bringing this awesome new in-person format to you uh, in my new recording studio. We've uh, gone to great lengths to make it an awesome set. I'm very proud of it. And um, it's only going to get better from here. I have some incredible guests coming up. So please hit the alert notif and notif notif notifications button uh, in whatever venue you're listening to. If you guys are listening on Spotify or iTunes and you like the podcast, please drop us a review. Uh, we thrive on those and we need those. And if you're watching on YouTube or Rumble, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and drop us a comment and like the video and share it whenever possible. We appreciate that very much. So without further ado, Natalie White, wild and wonderful. Thank you guys so much. Much love to you from me and my team. And uh, I'll see you real soon. Welcome everybody to Far Out with Faust. I am Faust Chicho and I am excited and honored to be joined by my guest today, my friend Natalie White. And this is our first in-studio recording of the podcast. So you, I'm, I'm honored that you are my first. Um, I'm honored to be your first. Welcome. Welcome, my friend. It's so <laughs> good to have you. It's like we've gone for a full circle because, my God, how many years ago was it when we first spoke? It was during the lockdown. It was during the lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, God, you were outside and we were having uh, con connection difficulties. So the podcast, we tried to salvage it, but I, I don't, it didn't come out so good. <laughs> right. Well, our connection is far uh, stronger right now that we're in the same room. Indeed it is. <laughs> um, that podcast was about the ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment, which we're going to be talking about, but not today. Today we're going to talk about a little bit about current affairs uh, and of course we'll get into some more um, bigger and universal topics but also Natalie's family the Whites <laughs> has a, a long and some might say sordid history and run-ins with the law and a uh, series of newspaper clippings so maybe a film was made I heard I heard about the film um, so I grew up in West Virginia and um I moved to New York when I was, you know, 17, I think. Um, yeah, so anyway, there was this movie that came out called The Wild and Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. Now, it didn't come out while I was living in New York. I was actually living in Europe at the time. I was living in Paris, France. Um, so I did not get to enjoy all of the fanfare oh. um, that came into the Tribeca Film Festival with wow. The Wild Is Wonderful that where Whites. It yes. Premiered? Wow. <laughs> Um, and my sister, although she went, she did because she was living in New York at the time and she, um, 
went to all of the uh, premieres and everything. Really? Yeah, she did. She walked the red carpet, huh? Oh, yeah. And you missed it. I missed it. And, and not only did I miss it, I was living in Paris for like a year and a half. So I missed all of <laughs> the, the fanfare, yeah. all. Of, I didn't just miss the fanfare of the opening of the movie. I missed it all. And, and kind of like by the time that I got back to New York and back to the U.S. after I was living over in Paris for so long, it didn't have like mm. the same excitement. <laughs> Everyone was so excited about yeah. the wild, wonderful whites of West Virginia when it came out. Everybody you know, was talking about Jessco and everybody was talking about the family and, um, who made, who made the movie? Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville made the movie. That's but, right. but I do have to say there is another movie, um, that came out that predates the wild, wonderful whites of West Virginia. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, white lightning, um, <laughs> white, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, White Lightning came out, and White Lightning was, I believe, it was on like PBS or something like oh, that. Oh, no shit. And, yeah, and um, it was um, less outlaw, more tap dancing. So, um, <laughs> and Explain. you know, well, Explain what you mean by that. <laughs> so, there is a long history with um, tap dancing and singing to tap dancing within the White family. And um, it's actually part of it's very serious. And so um, Jessica's father, Ray. When you say serious. So there's an entire um, um, like wing in the American Folklore Museum oh, dedicated no to the tap dancing of the White family. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. So. So that film focused on... The American folk art, not folklore, folk art. So, you know, there is a very serious cultural part of the tap dancing of the white family. Um, I know that, you know, Johnny Knoxville um, is, you know, he made this amazing spectac spectacular spectacle. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what he does. And he does it better than anyone else. But, um, you know... There are other more serious aspects to right. this, is what I'm trying to say. It's not just all shaking pills and you know, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. scaring the scaring the bejesus out of people. Your sister got to hang out with Johnny Knoxville and meet him. And all um, that. I, you should really ask her. I don't. I mean, I would. I've thought, never I actually pictures, you know? watched the Wild Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. Are you scared to watch it? No, I just think that um, I don't have to. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like what it's about, though, right? if you see a play happening, you don't necessarily need yeah. to go see the, see the movie of the play, especially like if you were there for the making of the right. play. Right. right. <laughs> but um, I'm not against watching the movie. Um, I just have never seen it. Like I said, like it kind of like and, and, and by the way, all of the time, everybody walks up to me in bars and they're like, hey, people who know that I'm from West Virginia and everything, they're like, hey, have you ever seen the wild, wonderful whites of West Virginia? And I'm like, no, but I have had so many people describe it to me. Yeah, so I know it. Yeah. And, you know, don't forget, it's where I'm from, you know? So um, it's like if they had a movie about wherever the culture is that you grew up right. in and you knew 150,000 people well, there's not 150,000 people, I know. But if there's like yeah, 1,000 so people interested. that were exactly like uh, the way of the movie and people were like, hey, uh, what do you think about it? And you'd be like, I never had to see no, that. No, I fucking lived it. I don't, you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm sure it was fantastic, but it wasn't as good as the real <laughs> Exactly. Thing, you know? so, so, I mean... What I want to know is where do the where does the outlaw part? Because I mean, you're you're an incredible activist, and we're gonna get into what you've been, um, you know, very um, sh strong and passionate about. But it's amazing to me that you have this legacy in your family. Well, I, uh, well, you know, I am who I am, and just be the the sense of the word outlaw. Um, it just means someone who lives by their own rules, right? Mm -hmm. And so 
maybe an outlaw would be considered somebody who, you know, walked 250 miles from New York to Washington, D.C. to paint ERA now and, and you know, paint yeah. <laughs> right in front of the United States Congress building and, you know, define outlaw for me. Right. No, it's a, it's a great point that you're making. Um, and, and I think that everybody's definition of outlaw is different. So some people see someone who is an outlaw as someone who commits crimes and who made up those crimes anyway. Who made up those laws. And just because something is against the law doesn't make it bad. Doesn't make it wrong. Either. And just because something is good doesn't mean it's legal. You That's know? for fucking sure. Um, so <laughs> who are we all to define what's good or bad within being an outlaw or an outlaw? No. Not an outlaw, you know? It just means you live outside the laws of society. And, right? that, and as they are defined in this in this single moment, right, know, which but, meant that, you know, 50 years ago, if you were an African-American and you tried to take the bus, you were breaking the law. Right. You know, exactly. In, in most fucking states anyway. So yeah, what is so, the, what is the law? Is it, does it have anything to do with morality? You well, know? I think that somebody would be considered an outlaw who, you know, sat down on a bus if they were African-American back in, yeah. you know, 1950. Yes. And, and, you know, and they were arrested and, as such, and they know? were. And uh, how crazy is that? Because I think that, uh, you know, as times change, definitions change, which is why, you know, outlaw is not a legal term. Yeah. No, it, and it, <laughs> it never should be. I mean, this whole notion that morality is tied up with our, our laws, most of which were passed that have nothing to do with actual morality or ethics. I mean, you know, you're talking about the United States government. I think we can leave the word ethics right out of the conversation. <laughs> well, I think that, you know, when you pass a law that says uh, you can't murder someone and then the United States government <laughs> sends you overseas to murder someone, yeah. is that right or wrong? Because the law of your land says it's wrong. Right. But the person who makes the law is telling you to break the law. Mm, yes. And and the, the, the government is very, very good at Orwellian double think and double speak, you know. And I just saw a, a little newscast, somebody at the WEF talking about, in order to have peace, we what we need to do is really reinforce Ukraine and Israel's military uh, mm -hmm. grade weapons, yeah, yeah. missiles. It's the only way to ensure peace. Right, and, and peace through you know, superior firepower. You know, like, right. <laughs> and, and the fact that you know that somewhere there's some, um, you know, brilliant soul sitting there being like, fuck, if only they had more weapons, we would have peace. You know, like, the, and people are, are used to swallowing these, these concepts from, quote, you know, the, the authority. And it's, it's absurd. and It makes no sense. Uh, and it's ridiculous to imagine that, you know, we, we're ever going to have peace from fucking murder and violence. It's just not the way it works. It's been proven over and over. Right. You know. Yeah. And it's uh, against the law, by the way, you know, to, to be, whether you murder someone on purpose or not, if you or I were to blow up a fucking city block looking for the quote bad guys, we would be condemned. We would be fucking prosecuted and we'd be thrown in prison for the rest of our lives if we weren't executed. But the government can do it. Oops. You know, what? Well, they were in the way. Sorry, we were looking for people who hijacked or, you know, you know, it's just across the board. The, the governments are and should be fucking outlawed. They should be illegal because they serve no true purpose. Right. I mean, we're all casualties of war at this point. If it's not our physical bodies, it's our, um, you know, emotional bodies yeah. have, that have been traumatized by all this talk of war. And it's not by accident. And, and, and that word is, is absolutely accurate. You know? And that's when you see things like Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which were completely unnecessary. Those are, those are deliberate, methodical acts of trauma and intimidation and fear. Because we didn't have to fucking destroy two cities in Japan to win the war. We didn't save lives by killing fucking 50,000 innocent people, okay? And we knew about Pearl Harbor. We set it up. You know what I mean? Like... We invited the, the Japanese to, we left the people and the ships there. And this, and this is known now. Why? Because we had, we had been listening into every conversation they had for months. And that's a fact. 
you know? So this notion that we, any nation can be surprise attacked is, is fantasy. It's farce. Well, it used to be, you know, before we had radio waves and things like that, that sure yeah. there could be a, but there's no reason for it now. No. And there hasn't been for fucking 90 years, you know, B but the mil military industrial complex funds our entire country. It's our biggest, um, export yeah. is bombs. Yeah. And, and we continue to drop them day after day. The bill comes in, you know, I was just talking about this. We were talking about this yesterday, you know, the, the drone bombs in America have increased exponentially since I think, I think Clinton was the first president who's, who saw sporadic, you know, the technology was coming out. And then of course his predecessor, fucking the son of fucking <laughs> The devil, uh, <laughs> George Herbert Walker's uh, son, Spawn. Yeah, who was who was spawned directly for that role of idiot in charge, do what the fuck you're told. And I was just showcasing a link between Halliburton, the company which it, one of the biggest reasons why we needed to go to Iraq and we needed to go to Afghanistan, Halliburton, and how it was. There's a direct lineage between Halliburton and Harriman Brothers. Harriman Brothers were these were the these were the companies that funded the Nazis during World War II. They were making massive money off off the the concentration camps, slave labor, you know. And it's not there's no it's not a coincidence that these same companies, the Harriman Brothers, Halliburton, that they've been orchestrating false flag events to create global conflict so that they could reap profits and continue to consolidate wealth. So where do we go from here? How do we, will there the pendulum swing the other way or will it be too late at I, some point? I mean, the fact that most people are still ignorant and people think that World War II that that you know, well w what happened was <laughs> America wanted to stay neutral. <laughs> um, we have a a 400 year history in this country. And we've been at war for every year besides 16 of those years. I forgot the exact number because every year it changes. And I'm like, what was it again? But it's the percentage of time America has been at war. It shows that we, we love being at war. The only reason why we didn't get involved in World War II had nothing to do with our neutrality. Or, you know, yeah, the we American, wanted them to kill each other. No, we were making so uh, uh, the corporations that fucking puppet the government was making so much money off the Nazis between the slave IBM. labor camps. I, I mean, IBM, Ford, a fucking boss, Hugo, Adidas, all, um, all, all these companies, Coca-Cola. I mean, you name it. The, the who's who were they were reaping massive profits. And the military industrial complex, of course, was was selling tanks and you know we were we, the government was in bed with the corporations who were making the most money and the person who was in charge uh you know was told you're not you know you're not allowed to get involved until you, we say so and that's why winston churchill another stooge you know they were all praising hitler and they're on record praising hitler for the incredible job he was doing with the economy and they were pretending like they weren't aware that he was rounding up the jews and shipping them off um I, you know because first they were shipped off, then they were rounded up for, for slave labor. Um, and of course, then there's the, the, the whole Zionist aspect of it, which is very controversial to talk about. But the fact is that the final solution was not Hitler's idea. Okay. It was proposed to him. What, what was the, what do you mean? The final, the solution? final solution was what Hitler called um, his, his systematic genocide and rounding up of the Jewish people in Europe. But the idea was presented to him first by a, a Zionist group that were, they were looking to move the Jews into Israel. Okay. And Hitler was like, "I'll send your, I'll send Jews to Israel, sure." And he did for a while, you know. But th but then he stopped. Um, he stopped communicating with them altogether and just started putting them into slave labor camps. But that served their ends as well because they used the the number to. Um, um, to bolster their leverage at the end of World War II when the Treaty of Versailles was written and they did, they declared the Jews needed a very safe place to live and they took Palestine from Israel. They needed six million Jews, you know, were sacrificed at the altar. That's terrible. At the Zionist altar. And people don't want to um, look at that part of history. But 
you know, I can show you records of how <laughs> the people who settled into Israel, some of them were brought from Germany. Some of them had a direct line and they were brought in to organize, you know, round up the Palestinian people. So if Hitler had not started to throw Jews into concentration camp, that wasn't his original idea, right? The original idea um, and proposition was to move the Jews out of Europe. And it was a Zionist idea, but they needed help because if people are comfortable, they're not going to move to fucking Palestine. Or I mean, there was a few places chosen on, on the map that they offered. Um, and, and this guy, Theodor, what's his name? Theodor Herzl. He was the one going around. He wasn't even Jewish, which is, which is crazy. But he, he said that, you know, the Jews needed a place to live. They don't have a country. And so the, he went to the, to the uh, English crown and the Rothschilds, who, of course, you know, were part and parcel with the English crown. And the Rothschilds said, you know, this is a good idea. What do you want? They were like, you want the Uganda? You want, you know, you want Libya? You want, they had a bunch of places in Africa they chose. You, they were like, what about Palestine? It's closest to, you know, and, and the Rothschild. I mean, you can read Theodore Herzl's his okay. journal. This is all written. He documented his entire journey into the creation of an Israeli state. And he, and he said that the Rothschilds, you know, and he always said dealing with them is very tricky because they're devious, you know. But he was like, they lit up when I suggested Palestine, you know, because there had just been a report that was published about the wealth of that country, the resources embedded in it. And of course, people are acting like this is news now. They're like, Israel wants it for the wealth. They've always wanted it for the wealth. You know, what, did that come out somewhere? There was a, a report published right before the Belfort Declaration that start, that talked about the oil and the natural minerals resources in the ground in the Palestinian state. You know, uh. which is what they what they were always after. Anyway, that's a very controversial topic that will probably be edited out of this first podcast. I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> yeah, so. so <laughs> Let's talk about something. Because you know, more. I don't want to get killed or, or canceled. canceled. Yeah. <laughs> I like money and yeah. being alive. Yeah, so we're not allowed to talk about um, <laughs> two, two of my favorite Jews. things to do: be rich and alive. Thank God we're not alive. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So, so, but, um, so I don't know if you've been following uh, along, but there was a bunch of congressional hearings a- about mm-hmm. you know quote UAPs Mm -hmm. and there's been this drip disclosure that's been happening and um, of course once the government decides that something is allowed to come out they stop bastardizing and and character assassinating the people who have been trying to bring the truth out and then of course everyone else is like that's bullshit man you know it's it's all bullshit it's all because well now we live in the age of the internet so people can get their own voices out there and they can get their own information it used to be that the government could put out stuff about people um discouraging other people to come forward yeah and trying to silence everyone else by you know just calling out one person and silencing them um but with the internet we can all share our stories. So I think that back in the 1960s, you know, if you oh, said yeah. that you had seen a UFO, they'd paint you to be an insane person. But now mm-hmm. they can't do that. No, well, they, they, they can't. There's been there's too many there'd be too many people to paint as insane. But you know, but the the the, the psyop has been thoroughly executed. You know, the the consensus is if you go on TV and start talking about aliens and ETs and UFOs, that you're a fucking kook. And that's part, it's part of the taboo that, that they created with the movement. And they did that to cover something up because that's the only reason why they create these campaigns. They're psyops. Just like they said that anybody who objects to the Warren Commission, you know, is a fucking conspiracy theorist and a threat to our democracy. This mm-hmm. is, these are the same mm-hmm. words they ban, they use, uh, and they've been using them for decades. You know, so the damage is done. Okay. okay, back to UFOs. So tell me about that time that you got taken into the ship and they they did that probing on you. I have not been taken into the ship yet. <laughs> However, oh. I am really looking forward <laughs> to it. Me too. Me too. I, I heard, um, I don't know if this is necessarily true or not, but I heard that you can, you know, invite 
I know you can invite contact, but I don't. But I did hear that if, you know, if you are truly fearless and and able, and you know how to make contact, which you can be taught, that you can you know make yourself available to be taken. And I was just talking to someone who had this. Uh, he called it spiritual surgery. You know, it was like three weeks in a row. These entities or beings visited him, and he said that he you know he could. He was paralyzed when they showed up, but it, but he was in a state of total bliss, so it felt really good, so he wasn't scared. And he felt something go into his thing, and he could sense three beings. And he said it felt good every time. He wasn't like, he was like, woohoo, you know. Uh, he had no idea what they were doing. He said that every time they showed up, the entire, like, the air, everything just went, like there was this electric um, energy that went across the room. And that after that, um, you know, he was paralyzed, but it felt so good anyway. And then he could hear them talking and it sounded like um, like an electric crackle like that you okay. would hear. But he could he could sense it coming mm. from one or hear it or he didn't know how he could tell that it was coming from one. And, go, and, you know, that's how they were communicating. But that's what his intuition told him. And then afterwards, he was able to fucking um, <laughs> he started to be able to. Ent- yeah, thank you. <laughs> he was able to uh, in, start to decipher. It was almost like a like a beautiful mind, you know. Oh. Like he was in deciphering codes and finding codes in Shakespeare. And I want that to happen to me. That's what I'm saying. Who doesn't want that? I mean, don't get me wrong. I still haven't figured out if the guy is absolutely brilliant or completely out of his fucking mind. <laughs> but but I think it sounds like a great experience. Well. They say, take me to your leader and our leaders are currently having, um, open hearings on aliens. Yeah. That's the United States Senate. Yeah, they were. Yeah. So, um, do you know if they found out anything in these hearings? Are they going to start apologizing to people who (laughs) they don't apologize? They don't apologize because they, in order to apologize, you have to admit that you lied. Okay. And they'd rather just continue to reinvent the truth. Okay. Like, this is new. We've never seen this before. No, really? Is that what it is? Is that why we're just finding out now? Or is it because you've been keeping it a fucking secret for 55 years? <laughs> so, um, w- what will come out of these hearings? Nothing. Well, <laughs> speaking of ufos you know when the james webb telescope turned on they yeah. found a planet out there many galaxies away um that they found out was giving off like um the same gas that our planet gives off oh yeah um so therefore since it's giving off a similar gas there's a pretty good um explanation for that which is that there's life similar to ours on mm-hmm. that planet so and this is not me, a conspiracy theorist, saying that. Are you a conspiracy theorist? Um, I, didn't, I, didn't I think that the conspiracy is a conspiracy is a conspiracy is a conspiracy. Um, I also will stop myself at some point and say, what can I do about it? Right. And if the answer is no, I just kind of stop. No, nothing. Yeah. I can't do anything about it. Sometimes I'll just stop myself and say, well, it doesn't really matter anyway. Yeah. Well, you're smart. Don't you shouldn't pick fights you can't win. You know? Yeah. And I should remember that advice as well. <laughs> really, I should have write a tattoo it on my fucking hand. But I, not that I pick a lot of fights, but I have a loud mouth sometimes. And yeah, I'm not I, gonna like pick a fight with the U.S. military industrial no, complex. Not. However, I'm a big fan of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Big Brother. You know, Didn't you hear that? They're fantastic. <laughs> I talk about them and I mean, I do promos for them all the time. I'm like, listen, they're doing this, they're doing this, they're doing that. They probably love me. Anyway, people are buying Raytheon stock left and right. Thanks to. Yeah. Well, (laughs) in fact, to your point, there is something about being anti something reinforces that it's happening. Yeah. Right. So being anti war reinforces war. If you actually want to be anti-war, you should really be pro-peace. Embody peace. Right. This is a big, this is part of the human evolution that we need to figure out. You know, you had, and this is controversial to say, but I remember, I remember vividly being in New York City um, during the pandemic and during the uh, BLM, uh, well, you could say protests, others might call them 
something else. But but what I but what I saw was on the roof of my building, and you know I saw about I would say seven eight thousand people come around the corner who were uh, you know and they were marching and they were protesting and all of them were chanting, "I can't breathe." Well, that reinforces the fact that more police will come after them and strangle them well, because it's putting it out there in the ether. It's a, te- well, I mean, it's a you terrible know? mantra to be repeating as you, as you walk over and over for hours on end. They should be saying like, I can breathe, hear me speak. Yeah. I mean, because words have power, right? Especially when they come after the, the word I, you know, um, and, and I wish that people were understood that power because that's a universal power. It comes with the sentience of consciousness, right? Like you know? the two most powerful words in the in the English language, I believe, are "I am." Absolutely, because whatever follows that is what you are. Right. So if you say "I am" and then you say "not," that's right. Already, you've stepped into the weeds. Right. right? But yeah. if you say "I am healthy," "I am breathing," "I am heard." then um, what you are saying, what you will be are those things. And you will put out the frequency to be those things because you are already saying that you are in the state of that. That's right. And, and, And I felt so bad hearing them, you know, having adopted this mantra and I understood it, you know, and, um, and everyone, everyone felt terrible for what was happening, you know, and it was, it was terrible what happened, but of course it was, we, you know, we know now that it was an event that was chosen and, and used, um, you know, to manipulate emotions and, um, and launder money towards certain political parties and get votes. I mean, you know, the people who, do, who literally donated money to BLM were donating to Joe Biden's, you know, campaign and no, and they weren't told that. And that's, that's kind of fraud and that's sneaky and manipulative. And Joe Biden is one of the oldest racists alive. You know what I mean? Like he has a long history of being on the wrong side. of And anti-woman race. too. And that's right. And we're going to talk about that again tomorrow. <laughs> well, also, um, I believe that a lot of the people who start, especially the ones that start these organizations, they have um, really good intentions. Yeah. And there are a whole lot of people within the Black Lives Matter movement which have very good intentions and care about the people in this country and just human consciousness in general. Those people are not the ones that are being corrupted by the political machine. The political machine came in and corrupted them. Those were the people you saw trying to stop the, 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 the actors who were sent in, you know, because this is, this happens a lot and people don't realize that, you know, it's not, it's not actually people involved in BLM who are, you know, picking up bricks and, you know, you have paid and an antagonizers and, and they're glory. I mean, they're basically working for someone like George Soros. Well, know, not necessarily even it's just, you know, a lot of people, they see that happening. And then, so they think that in order to be a, a, a righteous person on the side, they'll go join in, for a, and with a few bad actors doing that. Um, but you know, I think that when it comes to these organizations, um, if you give money to the national organizations, that's what's corrupt. Yeah. If you were, if you wanted to go donate to Black Lives Matter, what you should go do is find like a county, yeah, or a, or, ch- or a true ch- charity, yeah, small chapter like to an XYZ town, and you go. And you make sure that those people are good people. You know, you call them up on the phone, you FaceTime, you whatever. And then they say, hey, we have this event where, you know, we're trying to bring the community together. We need to raise a thousand dollars for it. And then you can give that money or you can give a few hundred dollars. But when it comes to, oh, we're going to give a national organization, whatever that organization is, $5 $5 million, that money is never, no. ever going to the yeah. the boots on the ground in the communities, ever. No. And and, and, and and I'm not saying just Black Lives Matter. I'm saying most oh organizations, God. especially the ones that are politically motivated, you should just help out the small chapters. Yeah. It should have been a big clue when the Democrats all dressed in African attire and took a knee. <sighs> I mean, talk about fucking embarrassing. 
Anyway, don't get me started. That's another controversial topic. Somehow I keep finding my way into them. We used to talk about something more, what's the word? Innocuous? Mm-hmm. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> um, but well, I We mean, can't help it. We just got to do I know. controversial well, I, stuff. I, we I have, feel attracted feeling, to it. Right. I mean, um, but th- those are the, some of the issues that, that are still what's wrong with fucking everything going on. I mean, everyone is talking about what's going on at the border right now. And, and why is the Biden administration insisting that Texas pull down its fucking bar bar? Why, why, why is the an, an administration of the federal government superseding its rights, you know, and state rights, which were written into the Constitution to be separate from and more powerful than federal rights? Why, why, why is the Biden administration insisting Texas not enforce its laws? Oh, I know why. You know? Because it's going to raise the Biden administration a whole lot of money. Well, that, yes. and It'll it, get the money and votes. And they like power and they like money. And sometimes they like power more and sometimes they like money more. But that move, yeah, it doesn't matter what it does to the border, to either administration. No, and you... The, let me give you a little hint. If you go back into 2020 and you watch the World Economic Forum's video, it'll have eight points or eight, quote, predictions for 2030. You know, the, the one that everyone talks about is you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. <laughs> right. Um, thank you. No, uh, no, thank you. Okay. I, I enjoy trinkets and possessions, but you can try and sell that shit to China. Okay. Or just continue to enforce it. But... You know, you had these eight points, and then you had these sub points, and and one of them was there'll be um, like it was, I forgot the way it was phrased, but it was but but everything that you see happening, you know, you, you can see the the cor- the fascist corporate elites agenda being played out through their puppets in government, and and it, it, one way or the other, whether you have laws or not, you know, the Biden administration is is a puppet administration. I mean, it's a Manchurian candidate for these for these corporate powers because the man doesn't even know how to fucking pick his underwear out and put it on himself. So God knows what he's <laughs> signing himself. But, you know, the, 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 one of the things is there'll be no more borders. You know, the West will have to accept more migrants. You know, like the United States will will no longer be the world's superpower. So they're, they're, they're trying to ingrain and sug- and put these su- suggestions into people's heads from now because their because their agenda is going to work towards these making these predictions which are their fucking goals come to fruition and that means flooding the border of every country that that they that they have their puppets in place that will allow it and by that's why you've seen more pu- more illegal immigrants come over in the last three and a half years than fucking the last thirty combined because they have they have the puppets in place. And they're doing everything they can to allow as many as possible because they know the next guy who comes in is probably going to fucking crack down. Well, however, by them saying this, by them making this prediction, they're trying in a way they're like, oh, OK, look at look at these econ- world economic leaders. Yeah. These are our predictions. No, they're really just trying to make it happen. Right. Yeah. So they think that by saying it that everybody will just fall in place on it. But the issue is we have the internet now. Yeah. And so we're not just getting our information from like one government controlled media and um, mm-hmm. one newspaper or one television show. We're getting it from everyone all over this country, all over this world. And look, the Arab Spring wouldn't have happened without, um, you know, the internet. Yeah. And without social media. And so, you know, just like what you're doing right now, you're informing people. That's what we need to keep on doing because we can, we have like Bill O'Reilly says, stand up, be counted. We have the numbers. We have the numbers. And it's not about like Democrats versus Republicans. If, if unenfranchised Democrats and Republicans and independents all got together and they said, instead of fighting each other, we're going to band together and we're going to fight up. Yeah. That's what the government doesn't want us to do. Oh, I know. I know. Because they want us all to be fighting each other. They want this two-party system. Oh, they I want the doubt. white people to be fighting the black people. They want the women to be fighting. They want everyone to be fighting. Right. They want everyone to be poor and disenfranchised. But all of the people who don't have the money and don't have the power, there's more of us. Oh, my right? God, yeah. So... What we should really do is band together and fight against them. 
we we need to come together and and stop being distracted because the tactic is to divide and conquer through distraction, through emotionally manipulative issues like, you know, and you'll see this. They're going to roll this out now. Mark my words. Now, uh, no one has been talking about abortion, but now that we're coming up to the uh, closer to the election, the, the Democrats are going to leak a letter you know, or they're going to have one of their fucking cronies in the Supreme Court leak another letter, and 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 they're going to convince women across the nation that that their reproductive rights are in jeopardy. You know, and they're going to do they're going to blame the Republicans. They're going to try to get as many people outraged as possible because they don't have Trump to to vilify, and they, you know that's who they used to get Biden in. They don't have that now because he has been he he hasn't been president, and the. It hasn't been playing 24-7. So people aren't already in this state of hate and outrage against Trump. It's kind of worn off. You know what I mean? And so they're, they're trying to get him off the ballot because they have no way to get him back into that place of everyone fucking, you know, half the country bought into it and wants to kill this guy. They hate him. No one has hated any, you know, at least half the country hated President Trump even more than people hated fucking George Bush. You know what I mean? Yeah, but again, the Democrats are doing this anti-Trump thing. And what it does is it just enforces Trump even more. Yeah. If Democrats actually wanted to be anti-Trump, they would just be pro one of the people running against him. Yeah, exactly. And also this whole thing about the Democrats and the abortion, the Democrats could have um, made abortion federally right. legal <laughs> by having a vote Easily. in Obama's first term. Mm -hmm. They had the House, they had the Senate, and they had the presidency. See, when Democrats get elected, they don't like to do anything. No. So um, so Democrats get elected, they have control, and then they they sit back and they're like, let's not do anything. That's let's right. not shake it up too much. When Republicans get elected, they get their way all of the time. If if um, Donald Trump was president and they made they there was a U.S. Supreme Court um a decision that came out that was anti something conservative, yeah. he would just be writing out executive order after executive order every single day yeah. um, to make sure that that right wasn't taken away from conservative people. Um, in fact, Joe Biden could have written an executive order to publish the Equal Rights Amendment. In fact, he wouldn't have even had to write an executive order. He could have just made a three-minute phone call and say, hey, archivist of the United States Constitution, um, publish the ERA. And then that would have given women um, a, a constitutional right to having abortions under... Um, equality. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, states that have state ERAs in their state constitutions have been using this argument and winning. Wow. So if all it takes is a three minute phone call by Joe Biden, why didn't he do it? <laughs> well, because he wants money and he yeah. wants power. And this issue of, of, you know, and, and by the way, Joe Biden voted against federally legalizing abortion <laughs> to Times. Wow, that's a two times. Okay, but he's a Democrat. Yeah, well, <laughs> he's also a diehard Catholic. Okay, yeah, so he's so Joe Biden isn't publishing the Equal Rights Amendment because he doesn't want abortion to be federally legalized. Number one, because he doesn't believe in abortion. How do I know? Because he voted against it twice. Yeah. Number two, because he wants the money and the votes. He doesn't want to fix anything. No, nobody wants to fix anything. The Democrats don't want to fix anything. No the doubt. Republicans don't want to fix anything. They want us all fighting each other so that we're not fighting them. That's right. And if they fucking fix something, then how are they going to convince yeah. people to vote for them right. in order to fix it? Yeah. This is the oldest fucking trick in the book. No money to be made in the cure. You know, there's no money in the cure. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's and whether so it's politics or whether it's getting sick there's nobody to be made in the cure and that's the sad truth and the, p the problem with our system that has been completely corrupted and until you take the fucking money out of politics and you make these people truly public servants and you remind this fucking country that they work for us they should be under fucking surveillance right they should their transactions should be monitored yeah not ours yeah they, they, they put this whole fucking nation in debt include and spend our money in every which way but on us and now that they've got everyone convinced that somehow that we're we're they're entitled to what whatever 
through blackmail, through coercion. I mean, you, you own property, right? Do you? Or will you be arrested if you stop paying taxes? Because last I checked, if we don't pay our taxes on property and shit we already fucking own, which is why we started this country, we'll be thrown in jail. That's called blackmail and coercion. That's not actual freedom. When we started this country, it was to stop paying fucking people for shit we owned, okay? And then we had the fucking the Tea Party and, and because they wanted to tax tea. And I, I'm not sure if this is exactly accurate, but to my understanding was they were going to fucking tear down Washington, D.C. rather than pay a tax on tea. Right. It took a Throw fucking, the tea into you know, the sea. It took, a, <laughs> it took a, a world war for them to say, okay, listen, please, we just want 1% of your income. We're going to tax you 1%. It's for the war. It's a big war. You're reading the headlines, right? Okay, fine. You can have 1%. And then we're going to take it back right after the war. That's what they fucking promised. And of course they lied. They continue to lie. And now income tax is fucking part and parcel. And, and oh, there's nothing true but death and taxes. My ass. That, that, that's fucking propaganda. That's a psyop. They want people growing up hearing that nonsense when it's not true. It was never supposed to be true for this country. And we won't get into the fact that death is also not true. But, but fucking taxes <laughs> are certainly not true. It's just one big fucking psyop after the next. Well thought out. You know, and unfortunately, the fucking feminist movement and it's it, which I love. I, I love looking at the dichotomy of these events, you know, because they try something. But then the human spirit and ingenuity takes it and makes it something usually pretty remarkable. You know, and the feminist movement was conceived, you know, by the Rockefellers and these think tanks because they were like, we started the IRS but we ain't getting the, the we're not sucking in the amount of money and debt that we anticipated we would. Well, the fucking problem is half the country stays home. You know, we get the other half to work. You'll see the fucking, you'll see the needle move. And so they came up with a campaign and they, they, they called it the feminist movement. Now, the fe we needed a feminist movement we, we, and we need an ERA. But their reasons for doing it were manipulative and had everything to do with greed. Right, right? but thank God they did them because if not, like... Uh where what would the world oh, be if like I had to stay home and take care of babies and have to put up with anyone? Yeah, no, no. Listen, like I said, I I love looking. They do this all the time, but they don't. But they can't anticipate right. what's going to happen from it. You know. Oh, oh. Speaking of, birth control was like made by like the Ford Foundation or something. Yeah, yeah. Like with like a grant because they thought that. The, the the medical community was like, no women are ever going to take a birth control pill. Women always want to be pregnant. Right. They want to have as many babies as possible. And so like something like the Ford family or something like that, um, they got together and they were like, okay, we're going to make this as like a grant from our foundation yeah. to make like um, birth control pills because, you know, we think that it would be good for the world. Yeah, and then so something that you know was just made, thinking that it would have zero consumer ever right. is taken by you know probably fifty oh, yeah. percent of women at some time in their life. It's a it's it's a huge, it's probably the most um, well established and handed out. I mean, you know, you can get it for free now. I don't, you know, and and I always tell people, unfortunately, po population control is one of the number one priorities of this government and. Not anymore, probably, which is why they're, you know, forcing people to have babies they don't want. Well, that's just, again, <laughs> that, that, that's all bullshit, I think, because de when, when an agenda is clearly population control, and, I, and, I, and I'm of, of the firm belief in years of research that part of the, you know, the reason why we have the system, the medical industrial complex in place the way it is, also Rockefeller it is, Rockefeller is the medicine establishment you know and they're pro eugenics eugenics i don't know if you know about eugenics Eugen yeah yeah sweden had it until like the 1980s you know and it's a very <laughs> that's why they're so good looking <laughs> that's why they all have they're six foot two blonde and blue eyes you know and that and it became kind of part of their culture um the problem with eugenics though is that it fucking it deems one set of people and or genes superior than the other and that's there's another word for that. It's called racism, you know? I've heard of it. Um, and look, you're like, you have a natural affinity for people who look a certain way or, and, or people who 
um, appeal to you, and then that can transcend however they look. You know, I, I I'm a big believer in that. You know, it's like yeah, yeah, we have a biological program that's based on our parents and our and our you know ethnicity and our bloodline, but also we're human beings and we see things and we see beauty in people that have nothing to do with their outward appearance. You know, we have we're we're also able to transcend that. But my problem with eugenics is, you know, everything that came of it is about dominance and superiority, and it justifies heinous and atrocious fucking acts. The six million Jews who were killed in Germany were killed because Hitler was in part and parcel inspired by the eugenics movement, by this notion that one race is superior than the other. So it, for him, it was the fucking Aryan race because that's where that he lived and that's what he was enamored by. You know, for the Jews, it's obviously the Jews. They have they they have a, a culture in Israel that says that if you are not Jewish or, or I should say Israeli, whatever, then you can't live here. You know, you're not going to catch a lot of Israelis marrying Palestinians. Why? Why? Because there's a big because wall. Because they're fucking Palestinian. Because <laughs> there's a big wall. Yeah, too. And, and you're not even allowed to live in the same area, you know? In fact, if you... Hey, Egypt, are you busy? You want to take some of these uh, uh, other ethnicities we got? Last I checked, that's like apartheid, you know? that's what, What's the difference? So I think that um, one of the reasons why they don't get along is because their governments are telling them that they don't get along. So oh, they're yeah. saying yeah. their their governments are saying, "Hey, you all have to live over here. You can't even cross this wall." It's a, it's dangerous for you. It, no, not only is it know. dangerous, you're not allowed right. unless right. you're carrying a machine gun and you're you know um, yeah. a part of the military. You're not allowed. I think that if if they were told constantly, you'd really like these people, but they live on the other side of the wall. So, you know, like you just can't get over there. Yeah. Then they would actually like each other. It's just kind of like if you, like words reinforce oh, yeah. things that the words mean. Yes. So, You're you know, right. if we just went around and for, you know, the next 30 years told Palestinians and, and Israelis Hey, you guys really like each other. You hey, you guys are best friends. Bet your ass. You know, for thousands of years, you guys have all been best friends. Um, so therefore, in about 30 years, we're going to have a big party. We're going to tear <laughs> down the wall. And you guys are all going to run up to each other and hug each other. That's what, what would happen. Of course. I mean, because you, they're all programmed to not like each other. That's right. That, and they're taught. I mean, and, and the... You know, and I know people who live in Israel and I and you know, and I know people who have these roots, you know, and 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 they're taught and and it's not look, in part it's manipulative, but in part it's true. We we have seen a lot of prosecution of Jews over the centuries in Europe, you know, and, and so the, there is a cultural stigma that they are dealing with and, and it is a it, it they have been victims. Okay, but but what has happened, in my opinion, is that this has become a, a part of their identity, and and they're taught it from a young age that Israel was started because okay, the Jews. We're getting into something. We're going to be canceled. Yeah, over. we are. But but <laughs> but what I'm sorry. saying is, just to, I mean, if this makes the final cut, let me just finish my thought. Okay, um, sorry about that. No worries. No, I appreciate you looking out. <laughs> um, and I know this to be true. You know that that this is we needed a safe place. We needed to be able to protect ourselves so that the horrors of World War II could never be perpetrated on us again. You know, and that's why we needed Israel. And that's why we still need Israel. That's why we, we, and no one can be here with us. It's not safe for us. We have to protect, you know, and our go the government, the Israeli government, which was started by a well-known Zionist terrorist <laughs> who, Are we talking who bombed his way into the position of, uh, what do they have? Prime ministers, whatever. Um, anyway, and, you know, but you're talking about Bibi. No, well, Bibi is Bibi's a manipulative fucking terrorist as well. But but this dude was actually the head of a terror movement. He was the one who bombed that hotel. Uh, it's one of the most famous. Bombs. Oh, you're talking about the shattered glass or yeah, I, the I, night of terror or something like that. Yeah, it was a bit. It was he was a well known, but he was the guy who they wanted, um, and he they put him. He was the first one in charge, but he was the head of a, of a terrorist group. Um, 
and he and he was really good at false flagging events. The Arab massacre was a false flag. I think he was he was the one who oversaw that. There was a lot of bombings that happened. Um, it's a fucking. I did a. I did like a five-hour special on it for everyone who's interested in in these events. Go back and watch uh, my episode with Gavin Nascimento, one of the most meticulous and incredible analysts and researchers and historians that I, the alternative historians, those ones who seek the truth and not the propaganda, uh, who I can recommend and check out his work. Gavin Nascimento, his name is. Joe Rogan follows him on Instagram. He he he's been like pretty censored and. His reach has been suppressed pretty extremely. You mean Ga- uh, Joe Rogan? Or? No, no, Gavin. But but he some people who follow him are like Joe Rogan and like all these incredible um, people who have these platforms because they know that his, when he says something, it's been backed up and vetted. So um, I did like five hours on on kind of the origin of Israel compared to you know what people a lot of people understand about it, and like let's look at the history. Let's look at what actually happened in the formation of that country dating back to the turn of the century with the Balfour Declaration and why um, the British agreed to give the Zionist, you know, group of people, Palestine, when when it, there were already people living there, you know, like they were like, yeah, sure, you can have it. We'll just sign here and now it's yours. Okay. Just go ahead and move in. <laughs> However, I live in New York. I live in, I live in like lower Manhattan. Um which there is no argument no. believe belonged to the Native Americans, right? Right. People who are indigenous to the U.S. and um, we, you know, America, not me, but you know, whoever was there before stole it, right? And then, oh, yeah. and then moved those people off. Now, like if. There was a rave going on in Soho and uh, like a bunch of those Native Americans that we moved off came in and like, you know, abducted a dozen of my friends yeah, uh, and tortured them. I'd want those people who abducted my friends to die. Yeah. No, <laughs> and I anybody mean, who was thinking about going to abduct more of my friends also to die. But but if you found out that the the people who were running the festival knew that these people were going to come and and didn't do I want those people I would want I would oh come on do you think that the people do you, is there proof that that happened I haven't I haven't is, it, looked the, into it the only eyewitness testimony I heard was of a woman who said that there was shooting there was crossfire and that three of her friends were killed by IDF um soldiers not by Hamas but by IDF soldiers. Oh, I didn't hear um, about that. Of course, they they were like, "Shut the fuck up," you know. And I'm, she was probably arrested. They arrested people who were trying to talk about the amount of people who were killed on October seventh by the IDF, you know, by their response. Not uh, what happened. It, Where was this rave? Was this like close to the Gaza Strip? And by the way, I don't understand why anybody who wants to, wants to live there. Like if I was mm-hmm. in Israel, I wouldn't. I and and I, I like okay. So I, I'm use this comparison. So I live in Manhattan in New York City. If I heard that there was like a major war going on in New Jersey, I would want to get as close to California right. as possible. I don't know why anybody is sticking around there. I know people who were talking about taking a vacation to Israel. I'm like, you do realize how small it is. Yeah. You know, just because the war is going on on the Gaza Strip doesn't mean that there's not accidents all over the place. Don't go there. Right. It's the Holy Land. The Holy Yeah, but it, land. I was born and raised Christian. It's my Holy Land, too. Yeah. I, I actually went into Palestine. Well, you know, I went in through Jordan. Um, I was in uh, Bethlehem on Christmas Eve one night. Mm. They didn't know it was a surprise attack. Yeah, they didn't know it was a surprise attack. No, uh, Who listen. didn't know it was a surprise attack? The people at the festival. No, the, the people, people. Yeah, I, I was saying I was no. like, what? I listen, didn't know that the people at the festival uh, knew. About let me it. just uh, say, put one thing on record. As I've said many times, huh, there was no justification. There is no justification for murder. Not for Hamas. Not for Israel. There is no justification for terrorism, terrorist acts where innocent people are targeted and killed, period. And no matter who's in charge of what, 
anybody who, who, who either through deliberate or accidental means continues to kill innocent people needs to be shut the fuck down and locked away and put in a place where they can no longer harm innocent people. Whether that's Hamas, whether that's IDF, whether that's the fucking government, whether it's the people in whoever it is is doing it. Whoever it is who have shown a proclivity to fucking erase human life, particularly when women and children are involved, those people need to be locked the fuck up. And, and we need a third party system that goes around and collects these motherfuckers who think that they can just yeah. bomb and that? kill and terrorize. Please send an alien race down you know? here to fix this stuff, um, you know, to be an alternative that's um, what we need because governments aren't going to hold themselves responsible. Groups like Hamas are going to continue to be fucking baited into these attacks. You know, I, I we started this conversation with I told you there aren't there is no longer such thing as a surprise attack. Period. Pearl Harbor wasn't a surprise. 9/11 certainly wasn't a surprise. I don't know if you noticed George Bush didn't seem too, too surprised when they <laughs> that was kind of shocking. He was right? like, the videos mm-hmm. of him being like, oh yeah. Because he, I'm glad but, they finally got that done. Anyway, kids, let's here, finish yeah, this book. Here's the other weird thing. You know, I know people are like, well, how was he supposed to react? And it's like, well, you don't, like, <laughs> you aren't the leader of the free world. So, like, we understand you don't about, know a whole me, lot kids. about federal aviation. <laughs> yeah. However, if you knew anything about federal aviation and you heard that an airplane got off of its track... You would be really surprised about that. Yeah. But if you heard that it also made it to land and then hit a and 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 was not shuffled in by two military right. aircrafts. Right. And then shot How? down if they thought it was going to make contact with anything, mm-hmm. let alone the most populated right. city in in our entire country. This is insane. It is insane. It the is fact insane. that it could even get close to the World Trade Center towers after the radios went off. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, go And send- you had these pilots that we were told barely had their fucking pilot's license. You know, the, they, they were terrible pilots. And the maneuvers they were pulling would have been fucking, I mean, a seasoned pilot would have had to really fucking focus and then become this kamikaze it's, I, I really don't believe any of it because, you know, after they announced the names of all these hijackers, half of them called into CNN and said, um, uh, I don't know what is happening, but uh, that's just me and I'm not responsible. And if you read about those hijackers and the names, you can see that, oh, um, f- like fucking 14 of them are, have hence committed suicide, which is strange because I thought that they committed suicide on the day they crashed those planes. <laughs> You know, the other half are alive and in jail in their respective countries, and they're never getting out, ever, because they they would lend truth to the fucking ridiculous narrative we were sold on 9-11. And that narrative was concocted by the same people who concocted the fucking JFK narrative. This is the same legacy of fucking assholes. Well, I, I think that... <laughs> yeah, there you go. I think that um actually <laughs> there will be... A pendulum that swings back there on this be, yeah. and um i think that you know getting information out there especially like what you're doing right now with this podcast is really important because now we can all have voices and we don't just have to hear the one universal voice which is the voice that they want us to hear yeah so for now hopefully we we can preserve our right to the internet because they're coming after it they know it's a danger to them you know if you like so they were just talking about you know the biggest threat to the world today is quote misinformation and conspiracies. That's because they're afraid yeah. of people who think freely yeah. and have and have their own opinions. And so they want to try to um clamp on to the last people mm-hmm. that they possibly can get. Yeah. And they know that like the younger people are not watching CNN, yeah. they're not watching Fox News, they're not watching anything. They're having conversations amongst themselves, like with their mm-hmm. own friend groups, with everyone. They're coming up with new ideas, new opinions. They are so afraid of people getting their own information from each other yeah. that they're now saying that misinformation is like the biggest and, attack and, on our society. And, and you know, but they're getting these j- journalists right out of school, and they're and they're convincing them of the dangers of, of you know they've got them. And they're indoctrinating them. And, and you know, if you study the events that happened after JFK and 
the investigative reporters who who met a very premature death, you know, through very very, you know, ridiculous quote circumstances, um, and suicides like a shotgun blast to the chest. You know, like that the, poor guy shot himself you know, in the head nine like times. Fucking, it was the worst case of suicide they'd ever seen. Uh, you know, it's just <laughs> it's like terrible. You know, and you look at what what has happened in the media, and the fact that you know we don't even have you know we 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 pretend to have a free press, but go ahead and try and speak out about some of these things, and and you're they're going to cut your mic. You know, that because the corporate controlled media is not going to allow it, and that's how they want it. But they know that more and more people aren't tuning into them. This is where they're tuning in. Right. In Canada, they just passed a law that said podcasts are going to be monitored and censored. You're not going to just Yeah, but they can't to- monitor and censor everyone at the, at a frequency if if there's a, enough people doing this. Yeah. They can't do it. It's true, but they're going to try. And then we're going to, you know, come up with some sort of uh Yeah. a, a way around it because no, we're smarter than them. That's for sure. And there's more of us. You, you want to know why we're smarter than them? Why? Tell me. Because the government doesn't pay well. No. And, that, and, <laughs> and people like things. That's right. People <laughs> like things. It is the American spirit. And, I, you know. We're capitalists. We, we are. Um, Start and, paying CIA directors uh, $15 million a year and, you yeah. know, you'll have some pretty smart people apply for the job. And that's for sure. Um, and, and look, I, I have total faith in the human spirit. And particularly in, in America, um, first and foremost, because we're armed to the fucking teeth. Yeah. You know, there's more guns than people. And um, God willing, we can hold on to our First Amendment rights. Well, we have to. You know? be, um, because. Um, and second. Th- the only. Okay, you're talking about the Second Amendment. Well, um, we have the second to make sure we keep the first. Right, That's the way exactly. I think it, there's you know? no freedom yeah. without. I mean, if they can, t- if they can take it, they will. The right. Open. Well, they, they but they can't because um, the only people that would actually be qualified to go in and take someone's gun would be um, a member of the military. And the military doesn't swear a no to the president of the no. United States or the governor or. That's right. They swear to the people. To Well, to the Constitution. Yeah. And the Constitution says that you have the right to bear arms. That's so right. you're they their oath is sworn to not a person. Yeah. And um. They also don't believe that people shouldn't have the right to bear arms. So um, I don't know who you're going to have go in and take these guns from people. Are you going to have some like Harvard graduates go in and be like, we don't think that you should have a gun anymore. So we've we've come to knock on your door. And they're like, oh, really? Because we have 50 guns downstairs. Do you really (laughs) want to see what happens if you try to take it? Right. No, I know they 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 need they would need the people to demand the guns be taken, and you're never going to get the, most of this population to capitulate. It doesn't matter how many fucking you know shootings there are and how, what really happened in these shootings, you know. And that's another controversial topic that yeah, I'm not going to touch. But that. you know the the Vegas massacre <laughs> and, and, and all you know all this all these people like <laughs> this guy. I just read the article about him that the FBI published a report that he killed all those people because he was unhappy with video poker. That was the best that apparently they're fucking the, their propagandists and their writers are really busy because whoever they had in charge of this story, I mean, he just fucking totally took a shit. I, mean, I was like, dude, I was like, really? You know, like video poker? The man, the man played video poker for 40 fucking years. All of a sudden he brought an arsenal into a fucking, give me a break. It's just so far fetched. Anyway, we should leave that topic alone. <laughs> uh, yeah, but well, I think that um, you know it's it's so difficult for them now to be able to censor everyone. Yeah, because um, we know how the internet works better than them. We invented it. Yeah, the hackers are on our side. It's true, and there's a lot of them, and it's a powerful, powerful tool that they all you know, and that's why like well, we need a moratorium on AI. Why? Why? Because you're scared that um, this technology is coming and it's gonna that your secrets are no longer gonna be safe. That's why we need a moratorium, right? Let's just fucking be honest. You're scared that all the fucking shit that you've been hiding is gonna be un- uncovered and brought to light, and that's why right. you know the government's get, afraid of the people. Yeah, if, as which they should be. Yeah, as which they should. Because they work for us, that's and right. they the only reason why they have their power is because we allow them to have it. That's right. And everybody needs to remember that, mm-hmm. you know. But we um, are consenting to them having power. That's right. 
and we can take that consent away anytime. And they know that. And that's why they're trying to convince people that we don't have that right. Yeah, yeah. but after a while, it's not going to work. And so it's going to work in our favor. Tell everyone what we're going to talk about next episode. Next episode, we will be speaking about the Equal Rights Amendment to the United States Constitution. It is this 24-word uh, amendment mm -hmm. that um, has people so afraid because it says that women should be equal to men under the law. I mean, it's so scary. And, and what about for everyone who is listening who doesn't understand that yes they've been told that women have equal rights and yes as a society we 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 parade and pretend that that oh, is true oh but, you guys well but the but, united states government pretends that we're superior yeah they well they like to do that but 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 tell everyone the problem with the truth of that um well the problem with the truth of that is that joe biden is refusing to publish the equal rights amendment and he will walk up to microphones in front of cameras and say that he is the best candidate for women ever lived while fighting against the Equal Rights Amendment in the courts. His Department of Justice is fighting against women's rights and he's doing nothing about it. He could just make a three minute phone call to say, hey, archivist of the United States Constitution published the Equal Rights Amendment, but there's no money to be made in that solution. That's right. We're going to we're going to get into that next episode. We're going to we're going to be talking about some of the possible motivation for the, the fact that this the refusal to publish this um, and make it official has been going on quite a long time. And, um, you know, there's there's a lot of reasons to get into about why they would take this as far as they have and then put the put the, the red light on it right before it can truly become part and parcel with you know, law and legislation. Well, one of the reasons why they wanted to let us go was because it was helping them. Yeah. Until we got it done. And then they were like, oh no, we can't believe they got it done. Now what? Yeah. And so they didn't pub they didn't they didn't publish it, right? They have they didn't put it in the they have to put it in the archives. Well right? technically the ERA is currently law, even though it publication is just a small minuscule task by a librarian of sorts um however it's really it's like schrodinger's cat right until you open up the box you don't know whether it's dead or alive that's where the era is right now even though it's technically law it has not been published therefore it can't be used in and, law yeah usefully yeah like so and this would affect law across the board it would, it would affect the way men and women um get divorced it would affect the way they're employed in, in a it would have an impact on our society which i don't think the patriarch um wants and we'll get into some of that when we talk more about this but it's going to be a very interesting conversation so if you have if you if you are not subscribed please make sure that you hit that subscription button um and um you know hit the like button if you enjoyed this conversation and don't forget to tune in next week because we're going to be back with natalie and we're going to get into the era and the lies that this administration has told well, you know and we'll get into a lot of this the weeds with the, the puppet biden administration and how they're destroying the country and keeping people from their full power um, right on but um yeah, thank you everyone who stayed with us. I know we were a little all over the place, but we uh, we, we we had to. Uh, we had hopefully to do quite that. a few things were cut out. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm sure uh, it, the editors will have a great job great job ahead of them with this one. But um, thank you everyone who joined us. Thank you, my friend, um, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this our first in person studio interview for Far Out with Faust. It's a glorious occasion, and um, thank you, my dear. Thank you. Um, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>